answer to last video's challenge question. There is only one move in this position that checkmates all 10 black kings, and this move is knight to e5. I will be going through each of the kings and telling you why they cannot escape. Let's start with the c6 black king. He can't move to any of these squares because of our rook. He can't move to this square because of our knight, nor this square, as for the same reason. And these two squares are blocked by other kings, and this one is defended by this rook here on d2. Now the d6 king. The same thing happens, the same, it is very similar to the c6 king. He cannot go here because the knight stops him. He cannot go here because the knight also stops him. And this rook is just so annoying and preventing his quest, stopping him from escaping. This black king over here can't move to c7 because of this same a6 knight that's guarding the c7 square and he can't move to any of these squares that include c8, d8 and e8 because of that queen here. Now let's move on to the f7 king. He cannot go to any of these five squares as the king is, the queen is guarding all of them. Now the g6 king. As for the same reasons, the queen is guarding all of its escape squares besides of besides the g5 square, which is being done by the f4 pawn. Now, we do the f5 king. This square is being guarded by the queen. This square is being guarded by the pawn. The knight is being guarded by the pawn. The pawn is being guarded by another pawn. Now, the g4 king. It cannot move to any of these squares because of the queen. And this square is guarded by the g5 of f4 pawn. These two pawns cannot be captured because this pawn is guarding this one, and that pawn is guarding that one. Now, the f3 king. Notice that if he were trying to go to e4, the sneaky bishop of b1 would stop him. And these squares are all controlled by the rook. Now, the e3 king. How could this possibly, how could this game possibly be checked? Well, if you paid attention in my video, during my video, testing progress at the video about discovered checks, you would have realized that there was a rook here on b3 that checks the king. These squares are guarded by the, this d2 rook, this square is guarded by the b1 bishop, and these squares are both guarded by the rook. The rook is then guarded by the bishop, which cannot be touched by any of the kings. So therefore, all ten kings are checkmated. Now, today I will be telling you about some ways to checkmate using pieces in the end game, where the, your opponent has a lone king and you have either, let's say, a queen or a rook or two rooks. This checkmate is the king and queen checkmate. Where in this position, this checkmate is when a king, it is a king and a queen versus a lone king. Now, there are really simple techniques to win this endgame. Firstly, you want to reduce, you want to make a square around the king so that his square's options to go to are very limited. So, which move in this position can limit as much squares as possible? The, I hope that you found that queen to d6 would have been an excellent move. This, this move makes a box around the king. Which then means that the king cannot ever leave this box unless the queen goes away. Another key thing to remember in this particular endgame is that you should aim to almost always put the queen a knight jump away from the king. This way it is this way the queen ca of course cannot be captured and it also limits the squares a lot. Now 
he has but one move in this position, which is king to f7. Now, he moved here. In this endgame, the queen usually follows the king to limit even more squares. So, why should play queen to e5? Now, let's see the squares he can move to. Okay, there's nine squares he can go to. And compared to last position, where he had eight squares. This sometimes happens though, but we have limited his options by a bit because when he goes here, we tighten it up. Sorry, when he goes here, we can tighten it up more. Now the box is like this. If you're ever black, try not to go to the edge as there usually will be trouble. Now when he goes to g7, we follow him and go to f5. Still a nice jump away. Now he doesn't want to go to g8 because that's on one of these squares. So, and there's no other way to avoid it. So when he plays a move like king to h6, we can seal that king in the corner. I mean, on the edge. By playing queen to g4, the king cannot ever leave this part. Unless, of course, he is cheating. Now, he is forced to do king h7. You can be safe and follow the king once more. But only this once. This part is very crucial. After you play queen g5 in this position, and he is forced to play king to h8, in this position, never follow the king again. If you play queen to g6, Notice what will happen? It will be a stalemate as in his black's move, he cannot move anywhere, he is not in check, and he doesn't have any other pieces that can move. So, in this position, you should get your king over to help, to help checkmate. And let's play a move like king to f2, get our king closer. Now, usually you don't want to get your king on like the edge where the king is, the other black king or white king in some positions. Now, when you move to, when you, you can move to king, you can move to king to s3. Then when he moves back to h8, he is forced, notice. Then we move closer, king to f4. King to f5. Now, we do king to f6. After he plays this, there is checkmate in one move. Can you find it? This checkmate is very simple. We can simply play queen to g7, checkmate. And the game is over. Now I will be showing you two rooks checkmate. This is the two rooks checkmate, where one side has two rooks and the other side has but a lone king. Now, this technique is usually sometimes called the Rook Roller. Now, the purpose of the Rook Roller is to one Rook controls and file and the other Rook checks it to force the King onto that file where another Rook comes and forces him to the following file and so on until he is checkmated. But sometimes, Black King can delay the process. For example, when you play Rook to C2, and notice this Rook is guarding all the squares, well, in this case, the King is as well, but he has to move to the D file. Black's smartest move here would probably be King to D3. Now, notice that White cannot play Rook to D1 now, as we, the Black King can simply just take the C2 Rook, and the Checkmate will be delayed further. So we move it to either c7 or c8. It just has to be really far from the king. Now, here, black would want to delay the process even more by playing king to d2. Now that we, now we can't play rook to d1. So we move far away from the king and then we can check on the next move. So he starts chasing us again. After we play rook to d8, he's forced to the e file. After we play rook to e7, he's forced to the f file. Then after rook to f8, he goes to the g file. 
Now, again, we can't play Rook to G7 as he will take, so we move far away. Now, when he plays that, attacking a Rook, we go to F2. And notice, and um, he probably have, he probably already realized it's too late, but let me just show you what will happen if he does try chasing up. You play Rook to G1 check, when he goes to the H file on the edge, we play Rook to H2 checkmate. This Rook is guarding these squares, and the rook is, this rook is guarding these squares, so he has no squares to move to. And therefore, it is a checkmate. Now, this endgame was made by two rooks. What if I magically removed one of them? And made the position a rook and a king versus a lone king. This will be my next example. There are many ways to win this endgame, but I will be telling you the quickest one. Now, this one is quite like the king and queen checkmate. You try to box the king into a space and then gradually make it so that the space is very little and finish him off. So, a move like rook to h4 here would be very good. Notice that he can't move to the third rank as his our king is guarding all of them. So when he moves back, we move our king closer, and then after he stays on the fifth rank, we move rook to f4. This move creates a box around the king so that it cannot escape this unless the rook moves away. So when he moves to d5, we tighten it further. Now, the trick of this position is to tighten your rook when possible. Tighten the, key, the box when possible. If not possible, then move your king closer so that it is. Now, th these two moves don't really matter which one you play. Let's just pick d6. Now, we can't make the box even smaller now as the black king can simply take and it will be a draw. So, we'll move our king closer to f4. Now, when he goes to d5, there's no point on playing rook to e5 as you'll just move to d4, so we'll move our king even closer to f5. When black moves back, we can finally tighten the box with rook to e5. Now, when he moves king to c6, tightening the box is no longer possible, so let's move our king closer. We play king to e6. After he plays a move like rook to, I mean king to c7, we can tighten the box by playing rook to d6. Now when he does rook to, a uh, king to c6, we play king to e5. Now, why would we do this? Didn't we already go to this position, except that it was right to move in this position? Well, yes, but this still works. When the king moves to c7, we can play rook to d6. Then after he goes to b7, we move closer. With king to d5. Then he plays king to c7, we play king to c5. Then when he is forced to move to either of these squares, his best option would probably be to b7. Then we tighten it further with rook to c6. Now... His best choice is to a7, where we play king to b5. Then, he will play king to b7. Now, there is a really sneaky trick when this happens. The rook is controlling this file, and he cannot move to any of these squares. You can simply move your rook to any of these following highlighted squares. And when he do so, he goes to a7, then he come back and play check. Then he is forced to one of these squares. He's best off playing king to a8. Then we play king to b6. Then he is forced to play king to b8. Then the same thing happens. 
Do you remember what I just said? And what should we do? Well, we could move our rook to any of these highlighted squares and force checkmate. Let's just pick c3. Then he is forced to play king to a8. Then, can you find a checkmate? It is rook to c8. And the game is over. Now, I will be giving you the end of video challenge question, which will be resolved in the next video. Here is the end of video challenge question. In this position, it is white to move. I want you to know a few things. The material is equal. Two. This king on f7 is very vulnerable. Three. This tactic does more than a simple trick, for example, c5, forking the knight and the bishop. It wins much more materials than that. And this answer will be resolved in the next video, like I said earlier. That's it for today, and thank you for your time. If you enjoyed the content, please consider to like, subscribe, and turn on the notification bell. Thank you.